joining us now, we have Sean Martin and Jeff Lawson. Welcome. Can you finally believe, finally believe that Fairbreak has come round and here we are about to kick off this massive moment in women's cricket? Sean, what's it feel like to see your baby come together like this? Um, well, I'll, when the first ball's bowled, I think the baby will have arrived. Um, <laughs> until then, it's, it's still a process that, that we're working through, but it's great to see the six captains uh, that's, that have been up here today already to speak to you. I think you can understand why those six women have got the roles that they've got, um, the excitement that they have about what we do and how we do it, uh, let alone the group of 90 players. Um, it's, it's always as we'd envisaged it. So to see that um, in, in this form now is, is surprising and unsurprising at the same time, if that's, if that's uh, possible. And Jeff, you sort of find you walking around the hotel that these players from all over the world come together and you two can stand there and feel so proud that you've brought them into this and you're giving those opportunities. What's that like for you? Well, it seems like the walk to get into the hotel has taken a decade. And so of all the, the planning and the heartaches and the headaches and the hurdles, which have been many, to, you know, 24, 36 hours ago to see those players arriving... Um, immediately bonding with each other, whether you come from Bhutan or the United States, it, it's it's quite quite heartwarming, you know. It's uh, it's very satisfying, of course, but it, it, it sends a genuine emotion through you to see the players eventually there. We've got a lot of workers, people worked hard to get this going. Particularly here, we've got the Hong Kong people. Obviously, we had to move the tournament there through you know the COVID stuff, but uh, a lot of people worked terrifically hard. But to see the players walk in and then get their uniforms and put on their colours and, and they, they sort of immediately feel proud about their, their colours that they got. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's been emotional, I've got to say. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. And so we've seen some of the training going on so far. How does it feel for you, Jeff, to see those players out there and actually you, they've brought them together all in their matching kits and it's going to be like you've only got a few days until we actually see the action going. What's that going to be like for you? Yeah, well, you know, we've taken a long time to put together those teams from all over the world. I mean, that's a, it's a massive undertaking. To, okay, they walk in the hotel, but all the research that's been done and the, the players that, that you, you find, so that, that's been, you know, it's, it, that, that's been tough work. So last night they were at the stadium practising and I was watching fairly carefully each group and the, the enthusiasm was enormous. You know, every person from our leading international players who have most have had a tough World Cup, they've had a few weeks off, they've spent a lot of emotional and physical energy at a World Cup, but they've, they've had a little bit of time off, they've got here and they've got with their associate players and and just the enthusiasm uh, and the joy that they showed during their practice yesterday when they did fielding was, you know, as a, as a cricket coach and a cricket person, you go, yeah, I like what I see here, I, I, I see teams that will gel and compete, so that, that's my cricket hat on. And of course, they've got to go off and, and, and do some more practice and find out. They're discovering, the captains are discovering about the skills of their players. So, yeah, it's an ongoing feast, isn't it? You know, the, the dis discovery continues every day and it will as the tournament starts. Players will perform in a certain way and coaches will react to that. Captains will react to that. So, yeah, from a, a pure cricket point of view, it's such an exciting place to be and, and be able to watch all that development. Um. And so, Sean, obviously it's about the experience and what we see from them, but it's also the legacy for women's cricket, and that's what you guys have brought to this. You've shown what women's cricket is over the world, and what kind of impact is this going to have? Like, we're being streamed to so many different countries, and it's making it visible to so many places all over the world. What's that mean to you and for women's cricket as a whole? Well, I think we, as a group, have always felt that um, there are two different games. There's a, it's not the one game that, that is played. And women's cricket, uh, in general, has a different audience a lot of the time uh, and, and has a great diversity about it. And in many of the countries that we've investigated and invited players from, there are wonderful players that are the equal of, of any of what you would term the better known players around the world, but they have no way of showcasing their skills or their talents. And I think what we do here, which is exactly the same as when a fair break 11 is played in England or anywhere else, you know, pre-COVID, is that we've identified players from countries that 
would seem remarkable to other people, but when we put them together with the Alex Blackwells of this world and the Susie Bateses and the Sana Mears, they suddenly, um, they have all the skill set. Uh, they, they lack game awareness, but once they're in that situation, they're the equal of any other players in the world. And I think the legacy is when people see that, then they understand that there's a breadth to this particular game that um, in many cases is not recognised in any other form but the form that, that we're putting together here. Yeah, and it's something I think is reflected, a lot of people are appreciating now. And we've got a question here from Firdos Munda from ESPN Frick Info, who says, firstly, as a woman involved in the game for such a long time, it's lovely to see something like Fairbreak coming together. As much as this tournament is about opportunity and bringing together players from full member and associate nations, What's your hope about the level of competitiveness and the quality of cricket we're going to see over the next two weeks? This is to both of you, so we'll start with you, Sean, on this one. Uh, I, I think um, you heard some of the captains speak about it. They, they do know each other. I mean, Susie Bates captained our first fair, fair break 11 at Wormsley in 2018. But we're talking about incredibly competitive people here. So they might be uh, having fun around the hotel and enjoying each other's company. But we've seen the footage and the videos and the preparation that a lot of the associate nation players have put into to, to their game to come here. So I have no doubt that once that first ball is bowled, um, it's going to be serious cricket. Now, they're here to play. Um, they're here to enjoy the experience of meeting each other and, and sharing their stories across cultures. But at the end of the day, they're, they're players. We see them as cricketers and they know they're cricketers and um, I'm expecting that they'll They'll play, they'll bring their A game here. Yeah, well, it's interesting, there's a couple of comments made about, you know, we've got a shy group, you know, particularly the associate, they're a bit shy, a bit quiet, and they walk out on the park. That's when they get the show while they're here. Bat, bowl and field. And I don't think they're going to be shy. And once again, through the, the video we've seen, we understand how competitive they are. So, you know, competitive juices flow all the time. But we're fortunate we have, you know, some of the great players to encourage and, educate the, the associate players but the competitive spirit is is the same in all these all these young ladies and i'm i'm expecting a hey, very competitive cricket but i'm also expecting very skillful cricket um, you mm -hmm. know I've, we haven't put this tournament together the thought oh well there'll, there'll be some players who aren't quite good enough that's not the thought the, the thought is they cannot all play what the, the players who've missed out have been quite skillful that we we can't fit into this tournament so and they're all they're on a very long list of players we want to involve. So the ones who are here, they, they know what they're doing. I'm not expecting some, some very exciting cricket. I think the other thing too is that we've got a group of very competitive coaches and managers. Um, they've, they've been invited, um, not not lightly, there was a lot of consideration given to who who we'd invite as a coach. I'm a bit concerned about the managers in fact, they're a little bit too competitive. <laughs> yeah, so, and the managers as well. So I, I don't think that the competitiveness is going to come just from the players. So those managers and coaches are here to win as well. Yeah, and it's like you said, Jeff, you might be quiet off the pitch, but it's what you can do on the pitch that actually speaks volumes going forward. Yeah, and, and when I say, and they, they might be quiet verbally on the field too, but, but they'll they'll chase hard, they'll bowl hard, they'll, they'll bat with all their, their energy. So, you know, you, you don't have to be a noisy person to be a competitive competitive person, a competitive cricketer. So, I, you know, um, if they're not competitive, I'll be, as a director of cricket, I'll be a little bit disappointed, but I'm not expecting to be that. And also, it's giving an opportunity to umpires and officials from all over the world. So, Jeff, I'm going to bring that one to you. What's it mean for them to be able to have an opportunity to be involved in fair break too? Yeah, and sometimes the officials get put to the side. Sometimes they deserve to get be put to the side. But that's another, <laughs> that's another issue altogether. Um, but, yeah, we, we've given you know the, the official. We've got some top people, some top match referees, Simon Torpel, Steve Burner, experience international experience and then we've got a lot of the, the uh, umpires from, from the associate nations a couple have done world cups recently so it's it's yes it's a it, that's a great question Jordan, because it's a part of their development as well and we expect terrific performances from them as well but also them to learn um, and, and to get on well with the players all those sorts of things so yeah really important that the officials are also given those those opportunities to, to, to showcase their wares and they're they're going to be seen in 70, 80, 90, 100 countries around the world. So their decision making will be under the pump when, you know, when a player turns around and appeals, they'll have a bit of pressure on them. But we expect them to, to live up to that and, and to grow in their, their experience. So you know, we've got officials on field and off field 
officials here for good reason and we want to see them get better. Yeah, and final question for you here, Sean. Obviously, we are at the incredible Dubai International Stadium under those amazing lights. We saw them training under it last night. And for the players stepping out on that, what do you think that first moment is going to be for them thinking, I am part of this massive movement in women's cricket at this incredible stadium? And for you, what does that mean as well? Um, well, for them, I, I think it's going to be just another step in, in the journey of what we do. Um, for me, it's going to be uh, a realisation of a lot of work um, and a lot of people that have been involved for well over 10 years. So it's not just about how I feel about it. There's an extended group of people you know, sitting in this room and, and back in Australia and in other parts of the world that have contributed hundreds, thousands of hours um, to get to this point. So I, I don't see it from a personal perspective. I see it from a a fair break um, family perspective. We have a, a hashtag fair breaker and there's a lot of fair breakers that have been uh, uh, working very, very hard on this for a long time. So it's the pleasure they all get out of it as well, I think, not just me. Yeah, and it's something I think, just to wrap it up there, it's just that everyone can be so proud to be a fair breaker and be part of this enormous movement. And it's not long till the games get going now. So, you know, you two need to get us a I'll let you go from this now and we can look ahead to Thank the you. games in just a few years' time. But actually, we've just got another question just coming in quickly from That's Mark right. Harris before I let you go. <clears throat> Let's start to talk about the long journey in 10 years. Can you explain quickly to sum up what, what the journey's been from the start? Just very quickly. No, there's no quick summary. <laughs> it's not a quick summary. But but well, I can, try, I can try and do that quickly for you. Um, well... <clears throat> Conceptually, this, this happened when I was working with Lisa Stalaker, um, you know, 2010, 2011, wrote her book with her in 2012 that we, we launched in Mumbai. Uh, Australia won the Women's World Cup in 2013 in India. And Lisa and I launched an organisation called WICL. Um, and that, that was, uh, the, the purpose of that was to do exactly what we're sitting here doing now, which was to create a global T20 tournament for women, which would help um, advance the opportunity, the revenue stream for women, the remuneration, all the things that would go towards uh, producing an, a, a situation where there was true professionalism in the women's game. You have to remember that um, pre-2013, well, players like Alex Blackwell and, and Lisa you know, were playing corporate cricket matches for me and being paid cash because it was the only way they could get paid. I mean, I think Lisa was on, you know, a very small amount of money as the highest paid uh, professional player in the world. So then we spent years and years and years getting to this point of getting ICC approval without the great support of Cricket Hong Kong um, and Jen Kaur and Mr Venkatesh, uh, we would not be here today. So it's been a long journey getting those approvals in place, getting people to understand that we were not a competitive organisation. We were here to complement cricket and to develop it around the world and to seek partnerships with people. So that's all been a part of the journey. Um, and it, it is it, it is quite a, a long, arduous process. doesn't mean it's not enjoyable along the way. I mean, we've had fantastic teams and fantastic players, and all the time we're meeting more and more of those players. But, you know, to Jeff, for Jeff to give his imprimatur to what we do, I saw Sarn Amir here, here, here earlier. Um, it's part of our management team. Alex Blackwell's part of our management team back in, in Australia. Minyon, Minyon Dupre yesterday became an employee of Fair Break. Um, and next year she will, uh, when she you know, moves out of her T20 phase of cricket, will be our head of marketing full time. So there are great people involved. We continue to bring great people on. But, you know, I could talk for hours about the, the journey and... You know, bore the pants off you, basically, but that's that's a short cameo of what's going on.